And in my opinion, from where I've been in my career, because I worked on that shallow to shaft stuff for a long time, yeah. it didn't make me any better. It made me significantly worse because the club kept getting further and further and further behind my center. Thanks for clicking the video, guys. I'm here at Superstition Mountain Golf Club in Arizona with Mike Malaska. How's it going, Brandon, Mike? Good to see you good always. To see you. Yeah, always a lot of fun. Now my third time out here, so uh, really building a, a nice little catalog, <laughs> catalog of videos. In response to some of the other videos we had, Mike, I asked for questions, and very interestingly, I got a group question from a, a group of three famous instructors wanted to know your opinion on this, which we've covered before, but okay. they wanted to clear. So we've heard of Kyle Morris, a famous instructor, Martin Hall, and Mike Bender are, are all asking this same question as a group. Okay. They want to know, why do you like tipping the shaft out? Okay. And, uh, and uh, Kyle had said, uh, for him and with his students, and you talked about the corner, Yeah. if they have in transition, I think what he was saying, in transition, if there's any kind of rotation and they try to do that, they end up being real, in a real bad position. Yeah. So they're, they're wondering, why do you like tipping the shaft out? Okay, yeah, easy. Okay. First of all, when you swing a golf club, there's a lot of forces that you're involved with. So when you swing the club to the top, when you're, when you're coming up, the weight of the club head is going that way. It's moving away from the ball and it's gaining in weight and force, and it doesn't want to go back there. It actually wants to go this way. Now, the guys who want people to go and do this with the shaft, right? Uh, okay, that's- Shallow the shaft. Shallow the shaft. I want your arms to shallow, not the shaft. As soon as the shaft goes this way, it's pushing your hands out away from you. And so that gets mm -hmm. into a lot but of other would issues. Say, they would say steep, in the transition, steep arms and shallow shaft. So the arms are going straight down well, yeah, and yeah. the shaft is going yeah, off. Yeah, I, I understand what they say. That's, However, what, that, that's what we've heard a it's lot. It's very recently. difficult yeah. to make this happen and this go here. And if it does, it's still, the club head is still pushing your hands away. So you're trying to create a simple circle, yep. all right? So when I, when I say get up here, when you start down, you want to feel like you're moving the club out this way. Now, when I do that, see, the, the, what people start doing is they misunderstand what I'm doing and they try to, they do it with their shoulders. See, I'm just doing this. And the only reason I'm doing this, I'm just giving the club head a little bump. I'm just bumping it just a little bit so that it doesn't fall behind me. Yeah, like we see stuck exactly. like this. And the hands go out, the club gets under. Now, when people see this, when instructors see this, which is what we see with most people, they go back and they come out and over it like that. And so what they're trying to do is they say, well, let's get you to go here and, and, and shallow the shaft and drop your arms so that you don't come out and over it. Yeah. In my opinion, that whole twist is more about what your lower body is doing or not doing right. than what your hands and arms and shoulders are doing because they're following mm -hmm. this. So if you get up to the top and the first move you make is twist, mm -hmm. you're going to go out and over. Also, also with the torso as well. If, yes. If, like if the torso twists, you're yeah. going you're going to go out yeah. and over. So this move here is a feeling. When I feel like I'm tipping the club out this way, all it does is when I start down. If you look at my swing when I get here, it's not out there, and for sure my shoulders and my right arm haven't gone like this. The hardest thing I have to teach people where I get them, they misunderstand, is they say, well, he wants you to go take your right arm and your shoulders and tip the club out this way. No, I don't. Your hands come straight down and the club head feels like it stands up. Now, what are my shoulders doing? My shoulders aren't turning. Now, once I start the momentum of the club into the correct circle, then I just let the club go. So it's not, it's not about actually doing this. It's just that instead of the club going this way, you bump it just enough to get the momentum of the club in the correct arc so that you're not having to get in here and do something to catch it up. Uh -huh. So what's interesting when I see, when I hear from a lot of these guys, I say, well, this tip out you're talking about, you know, you're, they're, they're, yeah, cause they're dealing with students that, that all the time, the, the hands and club is going this way. Right. So they're saying, well, why would you want somebody to do that? That's right. Right. So. I don't. Yeah. See, so, I mean, if you watch me, I mean, I get my right hip out of the way. You make your trend. My hands come right down here. So my arms actually shallow out. 
and my club actually shallows mm -hmm. out relative to my backswing. Mm -hmm. And then once I get right in there, once I get right here and I make this first little move right there. See, this is what Jack, when Nicholas said release the club from the top, it's impossible to release the club too soon from the top. Yeah. So let's go with Jack. What does release mean? Well, okay, the other thing is when these guys start, release has nothing to do with unhinging your wrists. And Jack's releasing the club from the top. He didn't twist his shoulders. Yeah. What he's doing is he was taking the momentum of the club head and directing or redirecting the momentum of the club head back out in front of him. So the club never got behind him. So that's what we're trying to do. Right. Anytime the weight of the club head starts going one direction and you're going another, you're going to have a hard time catching it up. Now, if you time it right and you get a force going this way and a force going that way and those two run into each other and all of a sudden you get this rebound effect, you can create more club head speed. Yeah. However, the timing for that and the pressure it puts on your back and your shoulder joints is pretty, pretty high. Yeah. So you can do it multiple ways. And what I would tell people is if they get out there tipping the club out or standing it up, if when I'm doing this, it, that has nothing to do with tipping it out, has nothing to do with my body going this way. See, my arms are coming down and the club's moving out. So my hands are moving right back in here. Now you're gonna see, you're starting to see more and more players that make practice swings, either like this, or you're seeing some of them make practice swings with the club back in here, but they're standing there doing this move right here. Now some of them get to this point and they, then they twist their bodies and others let the club go. But they're trying to get the momentum of the club in a position mm -hmm. where the weight of the club just takes off and it doesn't flip. Because that move, forearm rotation, the more of that you have, the more your hands have to do this to catch the face up, the harder the game is. Yeah. What everybody's figured out now is they're basically, their right hand in the club face is at a 90 degree angle to their swing arc from right there through the ball. So they're getting the club here and then they, so their face isn't doing this anymore. Hardly anybody does that. So you want minimal, minimal rotation this way. If the club goes this way, there's a good chance that you're gonna to have to catch it up. Just makes it harder. Mike, when you were talking about Nicholas and I started to see, so it was one thing that I've always liked that, that Nicholas had said, talked about was getting the, the club head to the ball before the button's on his shirt. Yeah. So when I see you doing this move, I see the button's on your shirt basically not moving. But that's what it feels like, now they move. Yeah, but, but see, like he, when you're yeah. doing the, the, the drill. drill. And, um, but I see, your hands relative to the buttons on your shirt are really getting in front. Or, that's, that's right, that's where I so, want them. And that's, so this is a move to really help you, the person that would say leave the hands up and be up in this position right. here, and then have a whole lot to go. Or twist and come over the top. Now, the, the one thing that I hear from everybody in the comments and everything, or a lot of people, that are basically just watching the YouTube videos, not right. MalaskaGolf.com or, or come to right. see you directly, is that when they do this, they hit it fat and or they hit it dead left. Uh -huh. So what are, what, how are they doing it differently from what's being explained? Okay, again, when I get up to the top, the fat is because when I say work the club head out, mm -hmm. okay, if you watch my wrists here, I mean, my golf swing really feels like, so I'm up to the ball, I get up here, my hands start down, the club goes out, I feel like the club's doing this. So I feel the club swinging level. So the club working out in front of me has nothing to do with the unhinging of my wrists. So you're not doing this as No, well. yeah, so right. the club, the club head feels like, and this is a feeling, I go back and I get here, it feels like the swing is level. It's the momentum and the weight of the club head that naturally makes my wrists unhinged. Now, if somebody's trying to tip the club out and they tip it out plus push it down, well, yeah, you're gonna hit it fat and left. Mm -hmm. There is no push down. All I'm doing is I'm moving the club head back out in front of my hands. I actually feel like I'm swinging level, but the momentum and the weight of the club head 
unhinges my wrist to the ball, but I don't feel any down. It feels level. Uh -huh. Do you feel, do you feel, through the shot you don't feel any down, but there's down here, right? Well, yeah. Yeah, there's down and then level. Yeah. At that corner. Yeah. So from that corner, it's, uh, so tell people what the corner is. Okay, if you were to put a T, so there's that. If you put a T right underneath the handle of my club. So go a face on for us since we only have one camera today. Okay, so if, if, you, if you took the handle of my club and you put a stick on the ground, like this yellow one, right. right underneath the handle of my club, and right back here behind my right foot, you put a T in the ground, which is right underneath the handle of the club, mm -hmm. okay? That would be the first and the second corner. So what I'm trying to do when I swing back is the handle of the club goes right over that T. Mm -hmm. It goes up to the top, and then it comes right back down on that same T. Yeah. Okay, that's where, that's shallow your arm. So your body has to stay out of the way to hit that back corner coming down. Now, if somebody does this, if your goal is to make the handle, if I choked up, so it's right over that, it's right on that T. Okay, now whether or not the club's a little back here, it's, there's a lot of players that do a lot of things. But if I get there and then I come back to there, it doesn't make any sense to do this because where's the handle? It's way out here. Oh yeah. I don't want it out there. I want it right there. So it goes up, the handle comes down and the club head goes out, and then the swing just feels level and you just turn through the ball. And it's very, very simple because the momentum of the club is what's doing the work for you. And not to belabor the point, but I have heard teachers say, okay, the hands go, the hands do go down to yeah. that spot, but the, the, sh the shaft lays off as they go down. Well, why, why, is, why is this then going to get you, like, how does this then relate well, to having to catch it up? Okay, well, look, you've got weight, okay? This doesn't weigh very much at the top. When you start down, this is just the physics of momentum. So this weighs 14, 15 ounces, whatever, up here. If you start down, as this club starts going down like this, as it's going down, it's gaining in force, which is weight. Mm -hmm. So it's gaining in force and weight, and where's it going? It's going that way. At some point in time, by the time that club head gets about here, it weighs about five or 10 pounds of force. If you wanna feel what that feels like, yeah. put a five pound weight on the end of the club and put it right there and see how much force that is. And so now you've got a club going this way, which is gaining in weight and force, and your body's going this way. Well, yeah, you've shallowed the shaft. Now, now, now you're gonna have to do something into the ball or you have to let the weight of the club go. And in my opinion, from where I've been in my career, because I worked on that shallow the shaft stuff for a long time, yeah. it didn't make me any better. It made me significantly worse because the club kept getting further and further and further behind my center. So it kept, I kept doing more and more of this and it kept, and this kept getting more here and I, I had to either figure out how to twist my body to catch it up or how to catch it up with my hands. Now I feel like the weight of that club head, the momentum of that club is right in front of me. And all I'm doing is I'm just turning with the momentum of the club. It's okay. so easy to control the face, it's incredible. Okay, I'll try, I'll try one, Mike. See if... So my swing set up feels like this. It goes up. Mm -hmm. And then actually what makes your arms drop is how and when you change directions, your lower body moving is what actually tilts your shoulders and drops your arms. It's not a physical force your arms down. Because mm -hmm. if you force them, they're tense. So they go down because of what your body does, but it gets right there. And then my swing just feels like this. Would it feel like your hands did? Virtually level. nothing. Yeah, yeah. Just felt level. Uh -huh. Okay, that's what I felt like when I first started playing because I was a baseball player, so I love this feeling. Mm -hmm. So I did the same thing, I just let the bat drop to the ground. But my swing feels like that, that, like just like that. Yeah, that, that level through impact is a thing that uh, Stenson talks about, keeping a, a beach ball under the, under the, uh, the water. Okay, see, okay, yeah, that, that's perfect. Yeah. Now here's the issue, throw a medicine ball. Mm -hmm. Here's the difference between golf and throw a medicine ball. If you take a medicine ball to throw it, where's the ball? It's right here. So if we were gonna throw medicine balls back and forth, we're right here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now you can throw it and you're level, okay? 
Here's the difference in golf. That's not the, no, 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 that's right. not the top of your backswing. Okay. You get clear up here. Mm -hmm. So you gotta figure out, if you're gonna medicine ball right. throw it, you right. gotta figure out how to get your arms back right. here so that then you can do the medicine ball if throw. If you start the effort before your arms get to that corner. You start unwinding about. before you get yeah. to that corner and you're ahead of the medicine ball. So when people say it's like a medicine ball throw, I go, yes. However, you've got to make a move there. That was perfect. And then your swing feels level. There is no down in a golf swing through the ball. It feels level. Yeah. Now, here's the other thing. Everybody loses angle, right? Mm -hmm. That's because they're trying to get the freaking club down to the ball. Yeah. If all of a sudden you think your task is, you, you're saying, okay, I want to feel like I swing level. What's your risk going to do? It isn't going to. Right. Because you're not right. trying to hit down. See, do you lose the feeling in your hands, though, if, if you're not trying to get to the ball? No. As far as no. what you want to do with the hand? No. Yeah. Again, it's a feeling. Yeah. See, see, your brain's a task, man. You've got so much momentum and so much force in that club. What most people don't really get mm -hmm. is how and what you're doing to offset and direct the momentum of the club so it does the work for you. What a lot of guys I see are doing is they're trying to get the same things to happen, but they're forcing momentum to do something it's not necessarily designed or wants to do. Yeah. We're trying to get the same things to happen. It's just chicken or the egg. Are you letting the momentum create the lag or the angles, or are you forcing the lag and the angles and just seeing, well, okay, now I got them. Now how do I make it run into the ball? Right. That never worked for me. Yeah. And for the students I see, anytime you say hold an angle, don't unhinge your wrists, you know, see, it doesn't usually work. But when I tell them, here's your swing, it's here, it's here, and then it's level. Well, when it's level, your, your right wrist ha doesn't have to do that. So I feel level, but because there's no tension in my wrist, okay, I feel level, but the momentum of the club, as soon as it gets on that side of my hands, what does the momentum of the club do? It's going down. There's a tremendous amount of force and momentum going this way. So here's the deal. Watch this, okay? Watch this. What's that? Gravity. Gravity. Okay, unless you come out someday and you let the club go and it doesn't fall, if it hovers, yeah. then you've got to help it to go down. Mm -hmm. But gravity says down. So the club is going to go down. The club head is going to go down. All you're doing is directing the momentum. You don't have to help it go down. Okay. Yeah, I remember when you were talking about taking a lesson with Joe Nichols, you thought, well, I'm just going to miss the ball if I do that. Well, that's you, you exactly. You'd swing like three feet above it. Yeah. Well, that's how he had us practice. Because every time I see you make a, a slow motion swing, it's always exactly like this. But see, now, if my wrists stay relaxed and I feel that same thing, the club head's going to get to the ball. Go ahead a minute. You, your club's going to go down. You can't stop it from going down. You can't stop it from going down, but I always see the club just going horizontal on people, though. Oh, I know. Yeah. yeah. Well, again, that corner or, or learning what it feels like to change directions. Oh, you're directions. saying once you, if you properly get to the corner, yeah. it will go down. If you don't get to the corner, you, the, you, it doesn't matter what that is. Then yeah. you're in trouble because now you've gotten in the way of the momentum of the club and you're going to have to make it work a different way, which I spent half my career there. And the half of my career that I spent there was probably the worst ball striking part of my career I ever went through. Mm -hmm. I hit it better now than I hit it through my entire Trying career. Trying to do this. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So... Again, that whole leveling out thing. Hit one more for us. I mean, Joe used to have a, he'd have a stand and go like this and swing way above the ball and then swing a little less above it and a little less above it. And then he'd finally have you just touch the top of the ball. Mm -hmm. So you finally felt how much you had to let the club head go to just touch the top of the ball. But I still felt like that I wasn't letting my wrist totally unhinge. Yeah. Okay. And then all of a sudden, then he'd say, "Okay, now go ahead, and instead of just catching the top of the ball, hit it right in the middle of the back of the ball." So now I hit it right in the middle of the back of the ball. Yeah. Uh -huh. And he say, "Okay, now just brush the ground." So you went from the top to the equator to now Which the ground. Which is pretty good control of momentum. Oh yeah. They say, "Okay, now just brush the ground." And you just let it just, and I still, I mean, I still feel like I'm swinging up here, but I'm just letting the weight of the club go down a little bit more. It's going automatically. 
All right, so I'm gonna do that drill one real quick before we end this extended version. That's okay. Okay. This is awesome because what I see, okay? Yeah. I, all these guys, all these teachers, I love, I mean, everybody's trying to get everybody to, to do, get better at golf. Yeah. Be better at golf, okay? What I've found is that what I've learned and what I've been exposed to from the physiology of it to the physics of it and how joints react and how the body reacts to forces, what you have to feel like you're doing with the club to get these joints to line up so that the momentum of the club does more work for you is very, very different than it looks or sounds. Oh yeah. And a lot of the corrections that you would make, because I made the same ones with people, to try to fix what they're doing wrong makes yeah. them worse. Mm -hmm. Because you're really not getting at the reason right. that they're struggling. Unhinge their wrists, twist yeah, too early. Yeah, you see somebody's hands going this way, you're like, no, do, you put them that way. Yeah. Make the club the go this way. Bad, yeah. Well, okay, yeah. as an exaggeration, that might help sometimes. But you really don't have to do that. Like I said, I spent half my career trying to shallow the club head, get it further and further behind me, and get my right elbow further in front of my right hip to the point where, exactly, yeah. where, mm -hmm. yeah. to the point where, I mean, I got really good at it and it looked good on film. Right. And I'd go out and try and play, and it was a nightmare. Every shot I hit was trying to make sure something bad didn't happen. Yeah. I couldn't just let it go There's like no everybody go. says, because yeah. if I let it go doing that, the ball wouldn't go anywhere near the target. And I'd look at my swing on video and I go, well, Cal, I'm getting all my positions good. Well, yes and no, because positions are static. Yeah. Golf swing's not static, yeah. it's motion. And you've got, like I say, you've got all these forces going multiple different directions. Until you understand where those forces are going and what the actual role of things are to get this club to swing in a simple circle. That's all we're trying to get, a very simple circle. Mm -hmm. You know, the other, the other thing I would ask you, yeah. I gotta show you, stand over sure. here. Is this, this is another thing that, in theory, I get a lot of it, but if I was gonna hit a ball right here for your life, mm -hmm. this is for your life now, not mine, because I know which one I do, so okay. for your life, yeah. there's a ball right here. Yeah. Now I'm gonna show you three swings. You tell me which swing you'd like to have me put to try to hit that ball. So here's okay. the first swing. All right. Okay, that's the first swing. Very simple circle, okay? Yeah. Here's the next one. And yeah. here's the next one. Yeah. Which one would you pick? Number one. Okay. So why are we all of a sudden standing here trying to do all this stuff and, and violating this simple circle that goes around your center? Uh -huh. I don't get it. Right. Now, if you're trying to exaggerate something, maybe. But what are we trying to get? We're trying to get a simple momentum, a simple circle going around you to run it into the frickin' ball. Well, I guess, Mike, because a simple circle at, the, at this lie angle, we would have, our backswing would have to be here no, 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 at no. that corner where you're talking no, about. No, no, no. Okay, there, there. That would there. be the simplest circle, right? No, or here. a Bryson DeChambeau kind of thing. Well, kind of. Yeah. But the circle is based on how the weight of the club relative to your hands goes around your center. Okay, so when I'm swinging up here, I'm doing exactly the same thing at the ball. Yeah. The only difference is I'm bent. Right, but don't you, as you take your backswing, uh, once you get here, it's starting to come above that circle quite a bit. And then it's got to get back on the original plane, like a Hank Haney kind of thing, or no, the no, original no. plane. And if then... you t no, no, if you take this circle right here and you watch my hands, because my hands actually work up a little and the club actually, because my hands aren't in line with the club, which is okay. where Bryson's are. Uh -huh. Okay, when I'm here, my hands are below the shaft. There's some angle there, yeah. Okay, so when I go back, when they line up here, what that means is the club went a little around my hands, mm -hmm. okay? But this simple circle, I, I'm doing absolutely nothing different right here than I do right here. That circle is going around my chest just like it goes around right here. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna try that leveling out drill before we end this. I'm gonna try to top one and then I'm gonna try to hit it good. Well, first, first miss it. Well, I gotta miss it, yeah, completely. All right, so what do I want to do, Mike? I want to go here, get it to the corner, and then level the thing out to where it just goes, just misses the top of the ball. Good, okay. okay. Now do the same thing mm -hmm. and let it try to just touch the top of the ball. So you're gonna let your wrist unhinge just a little more. Pretty good. Okay. okay. Now, you're just gonna let your wrist unhinge a little more. You're gonna let the weight of the club just a little more so you For hit the it in the equator. middle of the ball. Yeah. 
Perfect. Okay. Now let it unhinge them just a little bit more. So you still feel like they're staying hinged, but you're just going to let it unhinge them enough to brush the ground. I mean, this is not rocket science. Yeah. That level feeling is very it's cool. It's huge. Yeah, it's huge. Joe was brilliant. Joe was so far ahead of his time relative to the levelness of a swing, how it felt, and what you had to feel to get the club to do what it was supposed to do. And what was interesting is when you felt like you were doing what he told you to do and you'd watch it on the video, it didn't look anything like what he was telling you to do. Right. Which is what for years I didn't understand. Now I get why those feelings made the club lag the club. Everything works. Everything yeah, looks good. Right. I'm not trying to do any of them. Right. All the parts and pieces individually would be really hard to create. But if you have kind of a uh, unifying theory. Well, there, and, I, and again, you know, exaggerations. I mean, when the guys are getting people to shallow the shaft, I mean, I don't have, I've, I've had people try to feel that, you know, put things down and have them really do this to get an exaggerated feeling of going the other way. Yeah. But end result, you don't have to do all that. If you get the club swing, and I've never seen anybody hold a club up here and swing it here. I've never seen anybody either go this way or go this way when they're swinging it up here. So whether it's a total beginner, you stand them here and you say, swing the club around you. They yeah. don't take it in here and go this way and they don't go here and go that yeah. way. They just go boom, boom. The problem is when they go down here, there's a lot of neurological things going on too with your, your balance. Inner ear and stuff. Inner yeah. ear relative to the horizon. Yeah. So your, your brain's going, oh, where's level? So a lot of what happens to people is they go from here and they bend, and as they're swinging, their brain's trying to get them back to level to the horizon, which is a lot of the reason that they twist out of it. So, but past that, you know, up here, most people are pretty good. They go here, and now they've got some concept of what they're trying to do with the club, and they lose the feel of that flow, of the weight of that club, just going around them, like this. Yep. And they lose this, and it starts to become something like that. Yeah. It doesn't keep doing this. And this, it's easy to direct momentum, and the more speed you generate in that circle, mm -hmm. the more stable the club head is, the more stable it is. Yeah. So speed creates stability. Mm -hmm. I used to listen to tour players when I get to tour events. I wasn't a full-time tour player, I qualified Mondays a lot of times. So when I got in the locker room, I would find the superstars. Now, I wouldn't sit with them, they wouldn't talk to me. Right. Okay? But I would sit behind them and I'd listen to what they were talking about. Right. And this came up a lot, these two things. One, if I had the choice between hitting a hard eight and an, and an easy seven, yeah. I'd hit a hard eight every time. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the speed of the club is the glue that holds the swing together through impact under pressure. Yep. So speed is the glue. So I'd go, wow. So I'd get out there the next day and I'd have between clubs and I'd say, okay, take one less club and I'd add speed to it and go sideways. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Because speed wasn't my glue because the club was out of position. Yeah. So more speed made it more unstable. Yeah. Here was the other thing I would hear. Boy, if I don't want to hit it left, then I stand there and I swing as hard left as I possibly can. Yeah. So I go, okay, if I get out there, water down the left, because of my concepts, the club was here, I'd swing harder left and, it'd, and I'd duck hook it. And I'm yeah. going, okay. So these guys are all add speed at the bottom and swing left. And every time I do that, it goes sideways or duck hooks. Yeah. What am I missing? Do you think that's because of where you were yeah. from the top to the corner? Yes, Yeah. big time. Plus my grip was really weak for me and mm -hmm. the club face got way open mm -hmm. and the club got here. Yeah. And, and now, more speed, I couldn't control the amount of twist I had to catch it up. And if I tried to swing left, the club would get behind me and then it would catch up to go left, and what would the face do? And the ball would duck hook. Mm -hmm. Now, because I know how, what I had as a kid, <laughs> where my hands work this way through the ball, they're not, they get the club out and they go like this. There is no more of this. Right, right. Which I didn't have when I started. I was trapped into believing that you do your grip here, Open the face, square the face, close the face. Yeah. You don't see anybody on well, when tour. When I hear you talk about the baseball bat, though, it, I, I see a lot of rotation, but no. it, you, don't, you don't see that, though. No. Baseball yeah. bat. 
When I said, when, no, no, just, no. Just to show people from wait, wait, wait. our beginner video. Okay. What I'm talking about. Hang on. You haven't played much baseball. No, I was a good baseball okay, player. Okay, well, look. So here's the baseball bat, all right? Mm -hmm. So here comes the ball. So you're right here, you go like this, you hit, yep. and then what do your hands do? Yep. You don't hit a baseball like this. No, no. Okay. Yeah. So this whole thing in golf, yeah. Yeah. why do you have to do that? And the impact with the baseball, you're catching it out here. Well, yeah, because yeah, you've sure. got the face, and your right yeah. hand's going like this, and it's basically, why do you think Dustin Johnson, those guys, Kepka, they're, they're all doing this now. They get the face here, they get it there, which is where I had it when I started, and where everybody told me the face was shot. Yeah. I've got my old pictures when I first, the first time I ever saw my swing, and he told me I had a shut face and a throw release. Right. Okay, well, so what did I have? Well, on the back swing, when I went back, because I had a, what he called a strong grip, and I took it back, and I was right there. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, no, no, that's shut. And then I went up here, and I came down, and I had it right there. Yep. And I ran the club into the ball, and then over here, the club face, I went like this. And he yep. goes, that's a throw release. Yeah. So we got to weaken your grip, get the face more open, hold this angle, and then rotate your forearms, keep your left wrist flat, and keep your, your right wrist bent. Yeah. So I go, okay. <sighs> no. That's a way to do it, and, and face rotation is speed. But you also start to bring into face rotation is also hard to time. It's flash speed, yeah. Okay, so here, here I am now. My swing goes like this goes like that. This is where Dustin and all these guys are. They get they get right here, which the club isn't back there. Mm -mm. The club's right there. Yep. And then all they do from here is go <laughs> as hard as they can go. Okay. Because the face is staying at a 90 degree angle to their swing arc and they're accelerating the club head, it goes straight. See, if that face stays at a 90 degree angle to your swing arc like this, yeah. you can't hit it too far offline. Mm -hmm. But if you start doing this, relative to your swing arc. You know, like I say, that's what took me down. That's what made the game harder. Right. Now, I'm not saying I would have had a one on tour or whatever, but it certainly made hitting the ball significantly more difficult when I all of a sudden started to go open, get here, square the face, rotate your forearms. Mm -hmm. I don't do it now. I didn't do it when I played my best when I was a kid. And I don't teach it to most people. Mm -hmm. Beginners that take the club and do this, yeah. sure, rotate your forearms and touch them. Right. Over rotate your forearms. It's an they're, exaggeration. They're just yeah. Because they're going, they're going this way. Yeah. So they have no idea what it means to actually square the face. Right. But when you talk about baseball, you hit a baseball like this, and when you when you let the bat go, your your hands and arms go like this. See, they don't go, you watch these guys, their left wrist goes just like that. Mm -hmm. There's no baseball player who turns his left wrist over like that. Because mm -hmm. that puts the brakes on the club doing that, because you're fighting the momentum of the club. So the whole baseball swing thing is almost a duplicate of, of golf. The only difference, in baseball you hit a ball out in front of you. Mm -hmm. So the timing for the release point yeah. You direct the momentum of the bat from here because you're hitting something out there. If I all of a sudden move the ball right there oh, yeah, you're until you, it. Yeah. you hit it straight right field. Yeah. So all it is is a different timing for the barrel of the bat. Mm -hmm. But the hand action is almost identical to a baseball swing. If you guys have more questions about this, you can check out MalaskaGolf.com. Mike has an amazing library of videos there and a very active membership site. Click the subscribe button right below in one of these two corners uh, and also click the little bell as I've been traveling around we've been doing more live videos and the only way to get in on those live videos is if you click the little post notifications bell thanks for watching everybody bye cool I think we have time for one more thing sure I'll do as long as you think the camera will pick it up I'll do it